Hello, and welcome back to my podcast, How I Mother. Today's episode is called How I Discipline My Children, Part 1. And the reason that I'm doing this in two parts is because I think part of disciplining kids is figuring out why the behavior is happening in the first place. So before I talk about in my next episode what I actually do for consequences for my children, I want to talk about the first part, which is what causes the behavior and how I try to set my kids and myself up for fewer discipline issues. So when I think about what causes negative behavior in my kids or raises my stress level towards my kids, there are a few things that come to mind. The first one is when my kids or myself are overtired. When we don't sleep enough, emotions are already very high. So one little thing can set off one kid, which can then start a whole domino effect of influencing another kid, which can then irritate me if I'm already sleep deprived. And I saw this in myself a lot when I had a newborn and also another toddler at the time because my patience was very slim. And part of that was because I was chronically overtired and it's hard to regulate your emotions and have patience when you're overtired. I think one thing that it's easy to forget is that little kids, even babies and toddlers, they're still people like we are that have a variety of emotions at different times. They have good days. They have off days, just like we do. Sometimes we wake up and we're grumpy for no reason and it's hard to get out of our funk. And I think we have to remember that kids are like that too. Sometimes they wake up on the wrong side of the bed. Maybe they woke up more than they usually did that past night and so they just woke up not super rested. And I think just having that empathy for them that they're just like us and we don't wake up happy and cheerful and ready to go every day all the time. So thinking about sleep and giving a little bit of grace for them, I think, is is helpful when thinking about why they're acting a certain way. Another thing that comes to mind is I know for myself and definitely for my children, being over hungry causes a lot of issues too. And sometimes I won't put it together until one of my kids has had a meltdown and they're crying and they kind of calm down and they say, I'm hungry randomly. And then I think, oh my gosh, that's probably what started this whole thing. Now, I'm not saying that they act out simply because they're hungry, but I think being over hungry, again, it makes your emotions already elevated and then it makes it harder to regulate and be rational in the moment. And I've had that happen when I'm hangry too. I snap at people around me or um, I don't react rationally to a situation. I might yell at my kids instead of talking to them calmly. And then I get food and my blood sugar kind of regulates out and I feel like a different person. So kids can be the same way too if they're over hungry. Another thing that I've noticed over the years, and this is really more of a me issue than my kids because my kids are pretty good. Like if I say, okay, go to the bathroom and get your shoes on, they listen to me. But an issue that I've noticed with myself is sometimes I don't leave enough time for that. And I need to give more wiggle room of when we actually need to be out the door and back it up to say, okay, well, if it's going to take us 15 minutes to go to the bathroom and get our shoes on and get in the car, I need to plan that out better. Whenever we're rushed, especially rushing out of the house, is when I lose my patience and then I snap at the kids and then they have some sort of breakdown or they're doing something that's 
irritating in that moment. And I think it's more irritating to me in that moment because I'm rushing and I'm trying to get out of the house. So when I plan it out or we don't have a a very strict time schedule, I can be more relaxed. They can be more relaxed. I can have more patience with them, which keeps their emotions kind of in check. So they're not getting over the top with acting out or talking back or crying or if they can't get their shoes on right away, throwing a fit. Everybody is just more calm. So when I'm not rushing and I'm not pushing them to rush and I leave a good chunk of time for us to do what we need to do, I've noticed a a lot fewer discipline issues, or I guess I should say behavior issues, as we're getting out the door especially. Another thing that I've noticed, and again, this is a me issue, is setting very clear boundaries. And sometimes I think I don't set the boundaries clear enough, and then I get frustrated when something happens, and then I lose my temper with my children, and then they get upset and they have some sort of breakdown. And if I really look at it critically, it comes back to me. And I'll give you a perfect example. When we lived in our old house, the kitchen and the living room were two separate rooms. It wasn't like these more modern houses now where it's a big open space. And my kids really wanted to eat dinner in the living room. And I just wasn't really thinking. I knew in the back of my head, this isn't a good idea. Something is going to spill, but I just didn't feel like fighting it in that moment. I didn't set the boundary of, no, we eat in the kitchen and then we can go and watch a movie together. And so I let them sit in the living room. And again, this was total parent fail, but they were eating noodles with like a little bit of red sauce. And of course, because they're kids, the bowl of noodles fell onto my white and gray carpet and made a huge stain of marinara sauce on my carpet. And then I freaked out and I yelled at them and then they started crying and then they got upset about it. And I'm here, I am ready to discipline them for not being careful when if I really back up and look at it critically, that's my issue. Like they're little kids, spills and accidents are going to happen. I should have set the boundary of we eat in the kitchen, we clean up our mess, and when you're done, we can go in there, but we're not going to have food in there other than basic snacks. And I didn't set that boundary. And so it wasn't really fair for me to be getting mad at them and getting ready to punish them or whatever for an accident that happened when they shouldn't have even been allowed to do that in the first place. So I think that setting clear expectations for the kids and having a firm boundary and and not just for what the boundary is, but also what the consequence is if they break that boundary, then they're set up for success. You know exactly where you stand and you can hold firm to that. Another example is in our new house, we don't have a fence in our backyard. And my third baby, she's two and a half. Maya likes to go outside, but she's also a runner. And so we are trying to teach her that you can go outside and I'm trying to teach her the boundaries of where she can go. And at first I was not clear about it and then I would be annoyed that she would run around the house and then I would yell at her or punish her or discipline her, I guess I should say. And that wasn't really fair because she didn't really know what the expectations were. And so she's still not great at it, but now when she goes out, we have a talk of where are you allowed to go, where can you stay, where can you play, and then I make it very clear, if you don't follow my directions, if you leave the backyard, then I'm going to bring you in and you're done playing outside for right now. So I set that boundary for myself and with her and I make the consequences very clear and I make the consequence connected to whatever 
the activity is that she's doing. And then she knows and I know what stands. And then when you when if they break that uh, boundary, then you can say, remember, we talked about where you were allowed to be and you chose to leave the backyard and you know that the consequence for that is you're all done playing and now you have to come in. And once I have that boundary, I feel like I'm also more confident and calm when I have to give a consequence for that behavior. And of course, we're having to do these little things all throughout the day. But I think when the expectations and the boundaries are very clear and you're not rushed <laughs> and you're not over hungry and you're not overtired, things run a lot smoother. Behavior is better and then there's less need for discipline, which isn't negative. I, I think discipline can be a great thing and it can be from a place of love and teaching and that's fine. And sometimes we have to do that and it's no big deal. But when you have these things in place beforehand, I think it makes it a lot easier to for things to run smoothly and it makes it easier to discipline from a place of calm and peace and teaching as opposed to reaction and anger and frustration. And I think if we can control some of these things before the behavior even starts, everybody is in a better place to accept the teaching and the consequence if there needs to be one. So those are my thoughts for discipline or maybe I should say behavior part one. So next episode, I will talk about how I actually discipline, what some of the consequences are, what they look like, um, and I'll try to give some examples for that too. So if you have any ideas also of what helps you prevent behaviors from happening, which prevents discipline from needing to happen, I would love to hear those too. Um, but I look forward to talking to you in the next episode of How I Mother. See you later.